If you're even vaguely familiar with Linux or you browse certain communities, uh, you might have seen memes like this, where it's like, ah, uh, Linux users trying to install a web browser, or Linux users spending 20 minutes to change their wallpaper by doing 50,000 commands. Like, these memes are funny, right? I actually do appreciate them as a Linux user myself. But jokes like these and, and memes and stuff like that, uh, they usually have a bit of truth in them. And if you're someone who's never used Linux before, you might sit back and think, why would all these sweaty nerds think that it's a good idea to go back to this archaic time of typing commands out on the keyboard like it's 1979 and we're all running those big, like, room-sized supercomputers. I don't even think that those had, like, screens. When was the keyboard invented? Whatever, just we're going back to the archaic days of the past. Nowadays, we have things like graphics right and buttons and windows and and all this modern stuff here that allows us to properly use our computers without having to go back to this archaic time but to a lot of people including myself the terminal is actually pretty cool so on today's episode of pav explains a thing to you very poorly i'm going to try to explain why the terminal is actually cool and why as a new user you might want to consider using it occasionally before we get into that, though, I want to talk about two things real quick. One, yes, I am in a new room. I'm in a new house, actually. I'm house-sitting for a friend of mine, so this little set that we're in will be temporary. And because I'm in this new place, the, the, the ceiling in this room is just so goddamn high. Like, the echo is probably so unbearable, and I'm going to try my best to uh, uh, bring that down in post-production. But, you know, it's just temporary. We'll deal with it for now. And two... This is not going to be a Windows bad, Linux good kind of video. I just want to present some information and explain why a regular person might want to use the terminal every now and then, and if after watching this video you still decide that nah, the terminal's cringe and I don't want to use it, sure, whatever, that's your beef, dude. I just, I'm just trying to clear up any misconceptions people might have with the terminal or just Linux in general. If you are watching this video, then I can make one of two assumptions about you. You're either someone who's thinking about switching to Linux and you're trying to find some tutorials here and there, maybe someone to explain a lot of these weird, deeper intricacies of Linux that not a whole lot of people like to talk about. Or you're already a Linux veteran and for some godforsaken reason you find me entertaining, which I'm not complaining either way. But if you fall in that first category, uh, let's just go ahead and rip that band-aid off right now you're gonna be expected to use the terminal on Linux. This is both kind of a good and bad thing, honestly, because Linux is so different from Windows that, yeah, going into it, you're gonna be expected to do things differently than you would on any other operating system. So it's only natural for a community of people who know how this stuff works to just expect new people to try it out and see what's going on. Sometimes that leads to some elitism and some gatekeeping people and all that stuff, and we're not here to talk about these people we can safely ignore them. But if you're a new user and you're looking up tutorials and things like that of how to get, I don't know, NVIDIA drivers installed or how to play games properly or how to do fucking anything, really, you're definitely going to run into some tutorials online that just say, yeah, run this command in the terminal. And they're not going to show any GUI alternatives. GUI means GUI, it's graphics user interface. I don't know if anybody doesn't know what a GUI is, but I'm you know, covering all my bases here. Now, this isn't because there aren't GUI alternatives to certain options, because more often than not, there are. The only programs that I've personally seen that have been only in the command line have been things like benchmarking software or virtual network ports and stuff like that. And let's be honest, if you're running either of those programs, benchmarking software a little bit less so, you've already reached a tier of hyper geek that, like, it's not really the worst thing in the world for you. But there are some pretty valid reasons why you'd want to use the command line. First thing is that the command line is basically a shared language throughout all Linux distributions. If you don't know what a distro is and you're confused on that language, uh, you can click this video right up here in the top corner uh, because I'm not going into it in this one. <laughs> so I'm currently running Fedora Linux, and if I wanted to talk to someone who's running, I don't know, Debian, not all the commands are going to work right out of the box on both distros, but a lot of programs and a lot of the syntax, the actual words you type in on the command line, are going to be exactly the same between both distros. Let's go even further. So I'm talking to this hypothetical Debian user, and they're asking me for, I don't know, how to change an output on some audio program on their computer somewhere. 
I don't know how to do that. Linux distributions can be wildly different from one another when you get down to the individual GUI and like where different menu things are placed in the options settings and it, it can be pretty tedious. Or I could just send them one command and they could just open up a terminal window and just run a command and it would work just as effectively as digging through like piles of menus and opening up window after window after window. It, it's, it's just a shared language, and it's super easy to communicate between Linux users by just bash commands. And to appease the Linux veterans in my audience, yes, I'm aware that not every Linux distribution uses bash or the exact same commands, and it's not always going to be the exact same commands. But y'all are already super deep into Linux as it is, so you know what's up. I'm explaining this more for the new people who are watching this. Going back to that little thing that I said earlier where you have to go into a window and open a menu and then open another menu inside that window and then, oh, the option isn't there that I actually want is I gotta back out and go into a different menu and it, it gets tiring after a while. And I'm sure a lot of Windows users and Mac OS users can vouch for me on this one that digging through menu options on your computer is a fucking nightmare. With the terminal, however, you can just run a command and more often than not, it'll just work. Now, not everyone is going to give a shit about being the most efficient they can possibly be on their computer. I know I'm not, but it definitely can be easier if you take the time to learn how certain commands work. Take, for example, doing an operating system update. And I'm sure for every Windows user out there, the term system update just made their intestines undulate out of stress. Just like, oh fuck, man, I gotta, I gotta update my system. I don't know what the fuck that's gonna break. I've had it uninstall my Bluetooth drivers before. I've had it fuck up my graphics drivers. I've had it fuck up so many things. Let's not even get into poisoning your computer with Windows 11 right now. Updating your system on Windows is kind of a pain in the ass. That's not to say it's all hunky-dory over here in Linux land either. You know, certain updates can break things on your system. But if you're running a somewhat stable distribution like Fedora or Debian, you're less likely to run into that situation. If you're running Arch, however, that's an entirely different can of worms and don't just don't use Arch. <laughs> if you're a new Linux user, just don't use Arch. Use Arch later, but not as your first distro. It's, just, it's not worth it. All this to say that I think the terminal is an incredibly powerful tool and it allows users to really control their system. You can update your system, you can run a task manager, you can edit audio configurations, you can move files, you can copy files, delete files, you can run fancy little matrix graphics on the screen just for funsies, you can display system information, you can do so much with just one tool. The problem with it is that you have to learn the tool. And as a new user, you cannot expect yourself to master this tool right away. And a lot of Linux users out there, I'm talking like 90% of them, are totally understandable and they know that you're new and you're trying to understand what's going on. So if you come into a conversation and it's like, hey guys, I'm new, I don't know what's going on because someone explained to me what this command is, nine times out of 10, the person that you're asking for for help will be completely understandable. One out of 10 times you'll get that gatekeepy piece of shit, the like Richard Stallman type of dude. You can just ignore him though. <laughs> I'm being perfectly honest, just ignore anyone that you see that acts like that. I've been daily driving Linux for roughly 10, 11 months at this point. And when I first started out, I absolutely hated the terminal. I would go really far out of my way to just avoid using it at all costs. And I would get honestly unreasonably angry at being forced to use it for certain things. A lot of operating systems can be pretty hand-holdy nowadays, like I'm sure a lot of you have run into situations on Windows and especially Mac OS where you're trying to just change one little setting, but it, your computer just locks you out of doing it and says you need fucking admin privileges or something, like some stupid bullshit like that. Linux really doesn't hold your hand, and that's both a good and bad thing. If you're using the GUI and the menus and all that stuff, yeah, a lot of the newcomer friendly distros do hold your hand pretty well, and they try to guide you through the system as best as they can. But the second you open that terminal window, training wheels come flying off, and if you tell your system to delete itself, it's gonna delete itself. And obviously, I don't really have a whole lot of time to dive into like nitty gritty stuff with the terminal. I just wanted to give sort of a, a broad stroke sort of overview on why the terminal can be pretty cool sometimes and why it can be annoying some other times. <laughs> Because honestly, it can be a bit annoying trying to learn what fucking syntax you can use in each fucking program and exactly what arguments you got to use for each thing. And eh, it does get a little annoying after a while, but ultimately I prefer it. <laughs> we can go more into detail on certain programs like, I don't know, uh, BPYTOP 
or NeoFetch or C-Matrix or Hollywood and things like that and fun stuff you can do in the terminal. We're not going to go over any of that stuff right now, but if you guys do want to hear about that kind of stuff, uh, feel free to let me know because I would very much love to talk about sort of the things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis on, uh, on this system to make more content, I guess. And if you're interested in learning how I edit these videos, like I mentioned, I have to re-encode all my audio through the terminal, uh, you can go down in the description and go to my Patreon. Ooh, it's shilling time, baby! On my Patreon, you can get access to videos a whole day early, you can see behind the scenes stuff, uh, and you support me and all the stupid bullshit that I create. Here are all of my patrons. I think they're like right here on this side of the screen. I usually put them on this side of the screen, so whatever. Uh, they support me directly on Patreon and they're pretty cool and I think they're all sexy. I'm leaving that in. <laughs> like I said, there's a link in the description and also at the end of this video and uh, you can go support me there. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I promise you the way that this all sounds and looks is temporary and we'll go back to looking nice and sounding nice later. Yeah. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'm terrible at ending videos.